let me spend just a few seconds to explain the MERES uh, scaffold, which is really a next generation bioresorbable scaffold that has some very interesting features. First of all, it's ultra thin, it's 100 micron compared to the first generation absorb, which is 150. It gets totally absorbed from the body between two to three years. So it's a little bit shorter absorption than the first generation. It also has the same platform as Biomime in terms of uh, its design, because it has this hybrid design with open cells in the middle and closed cells at the edges. Also, another differentiating feature is to have three radiopaque markers at the edges, so it really gives us a more precise deployment technique. So, being said that, of course, we need to have a clinical program. So, we are talking about uh, two studies to start with. The typical first in men, which was 108 patients with uh, clinical endpoints, but also a subset of patients that uh, came back at six months for an invasive evaluation. So close to 40 patients came back for an angiographic evaluation at six months with very impressive efficacy. Late loss was only 0.15 millimeters at the end of six months. So I think that uh, we, we could prove efficacy in this uh, early first phase one study. The MERES Extend study included already 64 patients in multiple countries, in Europe and South America. We are very, at the very end phase of inclusion, and we think that by the end of the year, also for TCT, we're gonna be able to present the final results. I think the uniqueness about this study is that we are collecting a lot of invasive, uh, multiple imaging modalities in this particular study. So you're going to learn a lot about the mechanism of a failure or efficacy after uh, six months of bringing most of these patients back, not only for angiography, but also with OCT. I'm very excited because this really represents uh, next generation BRS technology. I think with all the features that, that I already mentioned, I expect to see the same efficacy that we saw with the first team men, which was a very robust study with more than 100 patients. But also we're gonna really understand the, the dynamics of this novel device inside the coronary artery. So you understand if the vessel will relax and the stent will follow so we understand if we're gonna prevent recoil, we understand the biological effect of serolimus to the vessel wall, and then essentially after a few months, or in this case, in two to three years, it's gonna go away. So there, there will be a lot of insights uh, from this imaging study that we will collect. So I think with the lessons we learned with uh, the first generation devices that we have to learn how to select better our patients for these new technologies, apply good technique of deployment, the so-called PSP, we prepare the vessel, we deploy following the rules, we post dilate to optimize the result. With these novel technologies, with thinner struts, shorter time for absorption, more tolerant for post dilatation, I think the combination of all these factors will really represent a bright future.